Okay, we're in section 105. There'll be contents for you to read through, examples for you to consider and try to understand, and then exercises to get busy with. Now, my name is Ron Bannon. This is a draft version of my adaption of Webster Wells's Advanced Course in Algebra, which dates back to 1904. This document is only being made available to PDF to the Prison Mathematics Project participants only. All right, now certainly I know there may be other people watching these videos and they may be interested in getting a copy of this document. It's not published yet, but it will be published. If you're interested in finding out how to get a published copy of this, I would say reach out to me by email and let me know you're interested. And then I'll try to keep you updated about when it's published and how to get it. All right, so what are we going to do over here? We're going to read it. All right, now I'm not going to read it to you. You're going to read this, I should say. And this is all about probability. And probability really, basically it's just counting how many possible events could occur and how many successes are there in that. So that's really what we're doing over here. And the probability, I want to point out, is just really a counting problem. The total number, total number of cases over success cases. I'm sorry, success cases on top. Now, I hope you realize there, it, it, it could be, you know, there could be the total number of cases. Everything could be considered a success. That ratio would be one. But then there could be no successes, could be zero. So I want to emphasize that the probabilities are going to be between zero and one. All right? So it basically boils down to your ability to count. So what I want to do is I'm going to say you read through that, and that's Wells' explanation of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at the problem, and I'm looking at it. all I can do. I can look at this and say, you know, what are they asking for? And it says a bag contains five white, four red, three black balls. All right? Now, if you want to, you can, you know, play around with that. And what do you mean by that? You know, I'll, I'll write this over here. White, white. There's five of them, right? White. White, white, one, two, three, four, five, and four red. I'll put red, red, red. These are balls like this. And then what do you get? You get three black balls with so BBB. I'm sorry, there's another red. Now, by the way, that's not answering a question. That's just simply saying what it looks like to me. So I know there's, you know, five white, four red, and then um, how many. Um, black, there's three black, right? Let me erase that. It's not helping me answer the question. What's going to help me is what they're doing now. Well, how many balls are there? Well, I'll write that down. So how many balls are there? There's, let's write this down. There's five. That's five white. Red. There's four red. And there's three black. So how many would you get? Let's see, 12 balls, right? So I know there's 12 things to select from. All right, and this is really important that you have 12 things to select from. How many are they selecting? So a bag contains five red, I'm sorry, five white, four red, three black. What are they doing? They're selecting three balls. So the question becomes is how many ways could they select three balls from 12? Well, that's going to be the total number of ways. Let me write that over here for you. So there's 12. They're going to select three. Now here comes the tough part. They want all the balls to be white, right? What's the probability that all are white? Well, here's the deal. What do I have? I have five white balls, and if they're all white, that means three are being selected. Now, what comes over here? Of the four red balls, I'm supposed to select none. Of the three black balls, I'm to select zero. All right? Now, certainly, that's the, the uh, probability now. What I do with the, the total number goes on bottom, and then the successes, the number of successes are on top. I got to do the arithmetic, and it doesn't look too bad for me to do that. All right, I'm going to do the bottom number first. I'll write that down for you. That's 12, 3. What's that going to equal to? 12 factorial over 3 factorial. And then you'd get what? Uh, let's see, three, 9 factorial, right? Well, I'm getting a little better at this. I'm going to say it's 12 times 11 times 10. Then there'd be a 9 factorial. That would cancel off. And 3 times 2 times 1 is just 6. What do I notice over here? This is 2. So what are you going to get? You get 220. I'll write that down for you. All right, I got that. Let me get my eraser out. This is my chicken scratch on the side. Now i got to do this top thing. And, yeah, it's certainly people do get quicker at it over time. Let me do the 5, 3 first. What's that going to be? Well, 5 factorial, 3 factorial, 2 factorial. What do you get over there? Well, if you thought about it, you get 5 times 4, and then it'd be a 3 factorial, but that would cancel off. 
and we're dividing through by 2. So what are you going to get? You get 10. Let me do the next one. I'm going to erase this over here. And I want to do the 4, 0 now. Now, some of these things, I can do that really quickly. We're not saying you can't. 4, 0. What's that going to be? 4 factorial, 0 factorial, 4 factorial. Well, that's really simple. That's just the number 1. Why is that? 4 factorials cancel. 0 factorial is 1. Now, certainly 3, 0, same deal. You're going to get 1. What do you get for an answer? 10 out of 220, which is going to be 1 out of 22. So that's going to occur 1 out of 22 times. All right? Now, the next question, again, I hope you realize what you're doing over here. They're selecting six balls now. So the total number of successes, and again, we'll write this down for you. There's still going to be 12 balls, but you're going to, well, I didn't say that the total number of possibilities, you're selecting six. Now, what do they want to do? They want two white, three red, one black. So how many white are there? There's five white, right? How many do they want? They want two. Now, what is there? There's three red. I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. It's four red. I just re 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 Let me just point out what I mean by that. It's right up here. There's four red. So there's four red, and we want to pick three of them. And the blacks, there's three black, right? We want one of them. All right, I want to point out this is written down for you. What else is written down for you is the computation for you. Uh, let me just quickly go through that for you. And again, you're going to get much quicker over time. You know, you get 12 factorial, 6 factorial. This is a more difficult thing to compute, by the way. What are you going to get? Let me write it down for you. 12 times 11 times 10, 9, 8, 7. And then there would be a 6 factorial, and that would cancel off. you got 6 factorial again on the bottom. What do you get? 6 five, four, three, two, and one. All right, I'm not going to put the one down, though. Now, I'm looking at this, and I want to point out when I'm doing it, it might be different than the way you're doing it, but I see six and two would cancel the 12 now. All right, what else do I see? Well, let me see. Four and eight, I'd get two. All right, what else do I got? Well, let's see. Five and ten would give me two. Hope I didn't go too quick with that. And I make mistakes sometimes. 3 goes into 3 once, it goes into 9 three times. So I've got a bunch of things over here to worry about. And I'm going to do it, and certainly I'm going to do the easy things first. You know, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12. So I get 11 times 12 times 7. All right, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do 11 times 12. That's going to be 120 plus 12, 132 times 7. Well, I'm going to put that down for you. I think I made a mistake already. Let me just take a look at that. 12, 6. Uh, I know I made a mistake. The number's too small. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Where did I go wrong? I'm going to write it down again for you, all right? And someone says, how do you know you got it wrong? The number's too small. So let's write that down at 12. And it's going to happen to you, too. If you're not using a calculator, you're going to make mistakes. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. And the 6 factorial would cancel off. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Looks pretty good. And then 6 is 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Let's do our cancellations again. And again, when I'm doing this, I hope I don't make too many mistakes. Let's see. 2... 6, that's 12, right? That's done. Uh, 5 would give you 2. Let's see, 4 would give you 2. And 3 would give you 3. Let's see. 2 times 3 is 6, 12 times 7. No, I don't think I made an error. I think that's fine. And I'm wondering what happened there. I'm going to have to look at my key carefully and how, how that got the 2,310 there. But we'll, we'll look at this. What do you get over here? 700, 210. I'm just multiplying at 14. 
What do you get there? 700, 800, 900, 924. Again, I'm questioning this over here. I don't know where that came from. All right, but I do see the 924 here. I'm questioning this. I have no idea where that came from because I'm not looking at my work at that point. So I'm going to erase this over here. I did the bottom. That was a lot of work. But we got the 924. And I'm going to put a question over here. You know, that, that's what you do when you look at an answer key. And you should be doing that when you're looking at my answer keys too. Let's do the next guy over here. And, you know, I got to do it. I got to do the arithmetic. And, you know, those top numbers are actually easier for me to do. I'm getting a little better at it. So I'm going to say 5, 2. Let's write that down for you. 5, choose 2. We'll do one thing at a time. And what do you get over there? Well, it's going to be 5 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Well, that's pretty easy to do. You're going to get 5 times 4 times 3 factorial over 2. And the 3 factorials cancel off. So you get 10. All right, so I see the 10. All right, let's do the next one. And I'm going to erase. And I'm going to do 4, 3 now. So we get 4, 3. That's going to be 4 factorial. Whoops, i got to write it down first. So you get 4 factorial, 3 factorial, 1 factorial. Well, that's just 4. All right, so I see the 4. And let's do the last one, 3, 1. What does it give me? 3 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, and that's just 3. So I'm seeing that. And again, I have to make a correction on my key, by the way. And I'm seeing that now. I don't know where that number came from, by the way. I have no idea. But four, 10 times 4 is 30. I'm sorry, 40. 40 times 3 is 120. So this is correct. This is incorrect, though. Incorrect. Not correct. I need to correct that. You're not going to see that in your notes, by the way. So, you know, I got this 120 over 924. I would reduce it. And let's see. I'm going to say it looks like it reduces by 12. And let's go through that. Again, if you don't see that, you'd have to go through that. So 12 goes into 120 uh, 10 times. And I'm going to do <coughs> 12 into 924 now. This is always something that I found uh, kind of odd in grade school, that people would be guessing at these things. And uh, they'd say, you know, what times 12 would give you uh, 9? And say, couldn't do that. Then it 92. It's really not 92, by the way. It's 920. But I realize how people think. And I'm going to say, like, you know, you might say 8, but no, 8's too big. So you have to go with 7. Now, 7 times 2 is 14, and 7 times 1 is 7, so it's 84, all right? So I'm going to do the subtraction. Let me just get my eraser. I don't like to put the carry down. I really don't. But I want to do my subtraction over here. And what do you get? You get 84. All right, and what times 12 would give you 84? We just did it. It's 7, right? No remainder, so it's 77. So 10 divided by 77, that's the answer over here. I will make a correction on that later. All right, let's go to let's go to um, this other one over here. And again, I'm looking at, I'm reading it, I'm trying to understand what I've read. It says a bag contains 30 tickets, numbered one, two, so they're unique tickets. Each ticket has a number on it from one to 30. If four tickets are drawn, what is the chance that both one and two will be among them? All right, so I don't think I want to do much of Ritik over here, but um, you know, how many tickets are there? There are 30. And this is the number of choices we've got. And we're picking four tickets, right? Now the question is, what do they want? Well, there's only one ticket with the number one on it, and we need to choose him. And there's only one ticket with the number two on it, and we need to choose that. And then what happens is there's four tickets. How many tickets are left after you pick, you know, the one and the two? There'd be 28 tickets. Now I hope you realize you're picking four tickets. We've already picked two, the number one and the number two. How many are left to pick? Two. All right, so you get these computations over here. You know, maybe I should go through those computations just to check my work out. And this is what I think you should be doing. All right now, 1, 1 is 1. That's pretty simple. 1, 1 is 1. Let me check out the 28, 2. What's that going to be? 28 factorial over 2 factorial, 26 factorial. What do you get there? Well, I'll write it down. It's 28 times 27. 26 factorial cancels off, and you get a 2. So it'll be 14, right? Let me write that down for you. 14 times 27. That's not too bad, because you know, 10 times 27 is 270. 
And then four times 20 is 80. And four times seven is 28. Again, this may seem strange to you, but you do the arithmetic you like doing. We should agree upon the answers. But you get there, eight. Let's see, 10, 17. And carry the one, 378. I'm agreeing with that. Let me get my eraser out. This might be my chicken scratch on the side. No one really needs to see that, and you really shouldn't be showing off your chicken scratch anyway. You should be writing the results down. All right, so I got that all the top numbers are correct. I'm agreeing with that. Let me go to the bottom number, and the bottom number is 34, right? So I'll put this over here. When I say 34, I'm saying 30, choose four. What's that going to be? More difficult, right? So you get 30 times, I need more room, don't I? I can't write those numbers down. So what's going to be 30, 4, that's 30, 29, 28. Let me write the bottom numbers down for you. It's 4 factorial. And what do you get there? 26 factorial. Well, 27 and then 26 factorial. This cancels off. And it's a lot of arithmetic, but I'm going to do it for you. It's 30, 29, 28, 27. What do you get in bottom? 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And I got to do it. And someone says, why do you need to do it? it it's just arithmetic I have to do. 4 goes into 28 seven times, right? 2 goes into 30 15 times. And 3 goes into 27 nine times. I got some work here in my hands. What do I got? 15, 29, and then 7 times 9 is 63. That's not so bad. Whoops. That's bad to write that down because it's not 66. It's 63. Mistakes happen, by the way. And if you really make a lot of mistakes with arithmetic, please use the calculator. I got to do the arithmetic. So 29 times 15. Well, let's see. That's 290. Right, because 10 times 20 is 290. And then you get 145. 5, 13, and 4. 435. I'm just checking. 63. And my question is, can I do that arithmetic? I think so. I'm going to start to erase my chicken scratch because I, I really don't need to see that. And someone says, why? It's something you should be doing on the side. People aren't interested in your chicken scratch. At least I hope not. You're beyond that stage. It isn't like you're in grade school where someone said, hey, what's your chicken scratch look like? You know, in other words, all your arithmetic that you wrote down in grade school. So I got to put this over here. But I'm not saying I don't make mistakes. I'm just saying that I want to put my work down. 435, 63. Let's take a look at that. Well, 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 3 is 9. That's 10. Let's see, 12, 13. I'm going to erase my uh, carries because they just look really disturbing to me. And now I'm going to do the other guy, which is a 60. So I'm going to put a 0 here. And let's take 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 18, 19, 20, 21. 24, 26. What do you get? 5, 0, 4, 7, 2. Am I getting that number? Of course I am. So, you know, we got two numbers now. We got 378 in top over 2, 7, 4, 0, 5. And I realize for, for uh, just about everyone involved here, myself included, reduction almost seems ridiculous. But you want to reduce it. And, you know, by reducing it, you know, what I would look at is 378. Someone says, why do you look at 378? It's easier for me to look at 378 than it is for me to look at 27405. What I do know between the top and the bottom, they don't share a 5 in common. That's as clear as day, right? They don't share a 2 in common. So I'm kind of looking around for another number that might work out for me. And I want to look at the top number. And I, I got 378. And if you add those numbers together, you know, 3 and 7 is 10. And that's 18. That's definitely just by 3. So I know that much. Is the bottom number divisible by 3? Well, let's take a look. 9 and 4. That's also, if I had those digits, it's also by 3. So I would just do like the 3 first. Someone says, well, can you go a little bit higher than that? Of course you can. But I just want to do this first. So 3 into 3, 7, 8. That's 1. You get the idea. Then get a 7. That's 2. And then get 18. And that would be 6. So th this here reduces to 126, much easier number for me to deal with. And I'm going to do the division on the bottom now. What are we dividing by 3? So 3 into this number, 27405. 
I know it's divided by 3. I know it's going to be a remainder of 0. So 9, that's 27. Let's say you get 0. That's pretty good. I'm sorry. I, I said 0. It's 4 there. Sorry about that. Going to make my eraser. My pen chip's really bad. So um, I get 4. And, you know, 3 goes into 4 um, one time. So I'll put 3 over here. 1. Then they get the, that's success because less than 0. Then I get a 0 here. And now 3 goes into 10 um, three times. That's 9. And you get 15. And 3 goes into 15 five times. I'll write that down for you. And that's going to be 9, 1, 3, 5. Wow, divisible by 3 again. That's incredible, right? So I got another divisible by 3. And so how do you know that so quickly? Just look at the numbers and add their digits together, and it's going to divide by 3 really quickly. All right, let's put that down. Pretty easy. I think we do it in our head, by the way. For example, 3 goes into 126. That's going to be, what, 42 times, right? The numbers are getting much more manageable for me. Let me put the 3 into 9135. And again, I'm not saying you can't do it in your head. That's 3. That's 9. I get a 1. That doesn't go in, right? And then you get a 3 over here, 13. That goes in 4 times. 4 times uh, 3 is 12. And you get 15, and that would be 5. So 3, 0, 4, 5. I'll get my eraser out. If I make a mistake, we'll know because we don't get the answer in the end. You might be surprised that calculus can do this incredibly rapidly, including Sage. All right, I'm looking at this, 42. That's was by 3. Not, oh, they're still divisible by 3. Right. Let me just make sure that 9, yeah, they're divisible by 3. So I think I can do that, and that's really getting much easier for me. So 3 into 42 goes, what, 14 times, right? And 3 goes into 3,045, 1,015 times. Now, granted, I know it's not 2, and I know it's not 3 anymore. It looks like it might be 7, all right? So I'm going to put 7 into 1015. That's once. And you might say it's wishful thinking. Not really. 7, 31. Well, that would be 4. That's 28. And what do you get over there? You get 35, right? Well, what times 35 gives you, what times 7 gives you 35? It's 5. So what do we get over here? We're dividing by 7. It would give me 2 over 145. Now, again, if this is taking you a day to do, probably want to use, start using a calculator instead. All right, this one over here, you know, let me see how many more. Oh, this last one. This is good. A little more difficult. I'm not going to go through the computations for the most part. But, um, you know, it says four tickets are drawn. Remember, there's 30 tickets. If you can't remember that because we just talk so much, go back and read the question. There's 30 tickets. Let's write this down over here. This is the total number of possibilities. There's 30 tickets. And we're choosing, uh, what are we choosing over here? If four tickets are drawn, what is the chance that either one or two will be among them? So I, I write that down. So we're still choosing four, but now comes a much more difficult problem, a one or a two. So a one or a two. So what I, what I want to do is simply say, let's say if one and two was not chosen, right, not chosen, right, not chosen. So what am I saying over there? Don't choose the one, don't choose the two. Now, what am I choosing? Anything but that. How many left are left over? There's 28, and we're choosing four. So I want to point out what this represents to me over here. Not choosing a one or a two. All right? Now, that, that, I would give you a number over here. We, we compute the number for you. All right? We compute the number for you. But then, then you say, you know, well, you didn't want that event. What event did you want? You wanted the, the event where there was a success so what would it be? It would be 1 minus that failing event. Remember, 1 represents the total number of, uh, you know, the 100% uh, the space we got over here, 65 over 87. And what do you get over there? 22. No, I didn't compute the number. But I want to point out, you could also do it differently, and there's nothing wrong with that. What are you doing over here? I'll, I'll just outline this for you. 30 choose 4, and then you, you could choose a 1, but not the 2. Then there'd be left 3 left over. You could not choose the one, but choose the two. Then there'd certainly be three of those other guys left over. You could choose the one and the two, and there'd be two left over. You're going to get the same exact number, by the way. What I mean by that, this number in the end, which is the correct number. You're going to get that. Now, I didn't do the computation for you. I just explained both of these avenues you could take. Some people find this easier to deal with. 
than what we put over here, particularly if there was a large number of, of a competition put down. It might be considered easier to look for the failure. And then if you find the failure, it's one minus the failure would be the success. All right. Now, granted, that is discussed in Wells' section. What are you doing now? The exercises. And I've got to be honest with you, it is not going to be easy. This is not easy. But for the most part, they start with very simple examples, examples that we've seen before. All right. Very similar. Lots of computation. Again, feel free to use a computer or a calculator to do those computations. What's the problem? It's setting the problem up. It's really setting these things up. These can be extremely difficult problems. Probability in general is not something that is simple. And a lot of people make mistakes with it. But there's eight questions. Then what do you do? You get to this Sage business here, computer algebra system. It's a CAS, open source. Go to this website. You can download it, interactive web-based application. And there's some code to put in over here just to get your feet wet with it. So here's the deal. I'm not interested in Sage, to be honest with you, not for this course. What I'm interested in, you doing the problems. However, you may do the problems and you may be disagreeing with me. And why, why could you just, maybe I made a mistake, All right? Maybe I made a mistake. So what are you going to do? You would say you were in 105.3, that you work problem number six and you don't agree with my answer. And this is the reason you don't agree with my answer. I will certainly entertain that. If you're correct, I will correct the key and I will put your name in the text, all right? Now, if you don't want your name in the text, then please say, you know, here's the correction, but please don't list me in the text, all right? So that's it. Someone says, where are you gonna list me in the text? Let me go over that with you. I'm gonna just scroll back to the beginning of the document. It's a long document. And let's go over here. I'm gonna show you something here. We would love for you to read through this introductory note business. There's a lot of stuff going on in this thing. And we read through that over there. Some of the stuff is, you know, what Wells wrote. Some of the stuff was what I wrote. You get the idea? Right over here, you notice it says contributors. At some point in the future, these things here are going to be updated. I also want to point out, if you're including your name and you want something mentioned about you here, like I work at or I do this, I'm a student at, please do that. We'd love to know that. You know, it'd be really nice saying, you know, my name is blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, maybe you want to give me the email address to publish. Please let me know if you want me to do that. And it can't hurt to have your name put down somewhere. And also, if you want to tell me a little bit about yourself, like maybe what state you're from, uh, what country you're from, what school you're attending, uh, if you're a teacher, what school you're teaching at, what subject you're teaching, whatever you want to say, and I'll try to include it, all right? If you want to write something longer, I actually might include that as well, that you want to write something about how this changed you, right? How this book here changed you, and that would be nice to know. And it would be nice for other readers to know that too. It's nice to know what other students are up to and where they're going with this. All right, thank you.